Here we are again. Got another biking stand over here. Um, old bike right there. It's an old Raleigh. Old Raleigh record. Probably from, I don't know, somewhere from the 60s to 70s. Somewhere around there. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to do a tune-up on it. Just took the wheels off of it. Uh, got a few things. You can tell the wires all kind of hanging down, messed up for the shifting. Um, yeah, I'm going to put some new tires on her, put a new cable on her, kind of go from there. So let's go take a little trip and see how it turns out. All right, we're looking at this old Raleigh guy. So I just want to kind of go over it with you guys and kind of show you old school technologies and stuff like there's the old seat, old rights seat, leather. It's got some rivets holding everything together. The frame's lugged, probably a nice high tensile steel frame. Um, I don't know, let's see if it says it. And that was from. Jocelyn Bicycles. Oh my gosh, that was from many, 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 many years ago. We've got cotter pinned cranks. Old school housing to the front derailleur there, and that's how it pulls it down. It actually stops on its own little thing there. Another thing I want to show you guys is the rear derailleur. Old school. But another thing I want to show you is look at the pulley wheels on that thing. They don't actually have any teeth on these pulley wheels. They're flat. Well, it's because they have this little ridge. And if you look at the chain really closely, there's a ridge on each of the side plates. The side plates are actually a little wider than the middle rings compared to new modern bikes. It's all pretty much flat. And then you pulley wheels have teeth. So that's pretty much the whole bike there. Got your old handlebars here. <clears throat> and they got these cool little pins on these ones right here that I hadn't seen in a while. So you pull it down, boom. And that little pin right there is your quick release. You push the pin in a little bit and it lets the Brake lever go up further, opens up the caliper a little bit more. Pretty cool. These are actually pretty nice calipers. Old school. Haven't seen these things in a long time. It's one of the first dual pivots. This is what like everything now is kind of based on. But this pivot's over here, and then they've got another pivot over here. <clears throat> All the new ones have a pivot here, and one in the middle. So, pretty nice bike. Actually, in pretty good condition. We're going to fix her up. We're going to put a new rear derailleur on it because that one's not really working because it's old. New cable and give her a good tune up. Let's get started. Interesting. Let's see if I can actually have to take it. 
tight. I'm going to do that, so I have to take the pressing wrench. It's nice and flat, kind of in on the edge there, and slowly but surely let it go. I'm going to start yanking on here, you know, really pushing down on that thing. You don't want to break this little wire that's right here. So I have to take the pressing wrench. It's nice and flat, kind of get it on the edge there, and slowly but surely let it go. Then just start yanking on it, or you know, really pushing down on that thing. You don't want to break this little wire that's right here. Washer, make sure when you move it, it's got a little pin on it. It goes into a little slot that's right there. I'm just kind of like to put all that together. And this has got a little weird end that goes into a little thing like that. This is really old school way. That they have those ends inside there. Boom. But. pieces of dirt that were on the refrigerator pulley. It's just clump dirt. And I'm now realizing that these were pretty good looking derator pulleys back in the day. They were good looking, to be honest. I'm gonna grab the camera real quick. I don't know if you guys can see that, but those pulley wheels are actually pretty nice and red. I was really surprised. And this thing really wasn't spring before, but I push on it like this now. Oh, it'll stay still, but look at that. It's actually working good. Cool. Little PFM. Pure freaking magic. I don't know. There's a bit of rust on the crank arm right there. See that rust on the crank arm right there? What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some steel wool and we're going to see if I can get that off right real quick because honest this thing's in really 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 good condition. So let's get some of that off there. Look at that. A little elbow grease and some steel wool. Polishes that up actually pretty nice. I don't want to do too much though because I'm only doing a tune-up. I'm not doing an overhaul or a complete restore. So this bike doesn't need to be restored. It just needs to be freshened up and ridden. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to really hurry up on this thing I've had so many customers coming in today and so many other things just kind of taking me away with flat tires and everything else. So uh, I'm going to have to just kind of bam through the rest of this tune-up real quick. And then I'm just going to probably just cut to a little quick footage of the end result of when I'm done. Kind of just give you a little overview. And we'll go from there. I wanted to kind of show you guys these old... <laughs> wheels that I got here off this old Raleigh. Um, they're looking really, really rusty, kind of like this. Um, the front one looked almost just as bad. Um, now, of course, the spokes and the nipples themselves are kind of corroded, but that chrome rim, I can actually get pretty clean. Um, if you kind of take a look at the front rim here, and the difference between the two, once you put a little tri-flow and a little bit of elbow grease and some 
sorry about that. Some uh, steel wool. I'm going to go ahead and go around this thing. I'm going to put triflo on all the nipples there. Favorite thing for putting on there. And then uh, we'll show you here in just a minute when I'm going to take some steel wool and we'll clean it up and we'll show you what happens. So I got the uh, rim lubed up and I was kind of wiping it down here just a little bit and kind of notice after I wipe it down with a little bit of triflo. See all of them lubed up. I'll sit there and wipe it down and actually kind of takes off a lot of that surface garbage that you see there. Now before I go and continue doing on all the rest and wasting a bunch of video and time for everybody, I'm gonna go right over here, right about there. And let's see what happens. Just slightly doing this. I'm not even holding the rim. I'm just kind of letting the pressure of this do this and of course I'm shaking a little bit but look at that just just a little bit I'm not even pushing on it oops not even pushing on it wow that stuff shines up pretty quick let's see what happens if I do this see I'm not even holding on to it nope see look mom no hands oh, oh there's, there's one hand I like that Down on the bench and the puppy wants to be involved you want to be involved too bad Dude, look at that. Wow. After, what, 45, 50 years, this bike can actually come back to life. So let me shine it up and let's show you. I'll do a little bit more. Now you're probably wondering, well, this dude's scrubbing it like crazy. I've already gone around on this side and did the whole thing. So I've done the braking surface and I've kind of gone around in between the spokes and on this side over here. So I'm just kind of doing the other side here. I'm kind of just go around the, the rim like this. So I start from this edge, kind of go over and then do the other side and then go over the edge. I don't know, I'm just weird like that. Um, some people do it in different ways. I just like to know that I'm continuing from where I've already shined and I'm just continuing on flowing the way I've done it. So I've already done the top there, so I'm gonna kinda of spin it a little bit. And I'm gonna give her a good little shave down on the sides with the steel wool. Now, there is all kinds of other stuff to get all the rust and all kinds of other stuff off. Steel wool is probably about the easiest and you're not using rags and all that stuff and you just kinda of have a bunch of steel wool dust around. Um, if you don't want that steel wool dust getting into things, then don't use it. Um, because there is some other chemical type of, you know, chrome polishing stuff, quick glow. Man, if you want this to, to really, really shine like a mirror, then after you're done even doing what I'm just doing right now, you take a rag, put this on there, scrub it, and then wipe it down. Oh my God, it's like, it's brand new. The only problem is that there's pitting on these old spokes, or on this old rim. Let me show you that here real quick. Let me put this away. Okay, right to the uh, rim here after I just got done polishing up a little bit. See, I can't really get away from what's around the, the spoke holes there. But if you notice the pitting in the chrome plating, that's actually underneath the plating because if you look under chrome, under a microscope, it actually is kind of porous. So moisture can still kind of get under it over time if you let it sit on there you get it off of there, then it won't be too bad. Um, but yeah, see my thing's going out of focus here. There we go. But it looks a lot better than it did. So let me finish this up, put the tires on, let me finish it up. Old rims, you say? What old rims in the stand, you say? They're not that bad, are they? Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a really bent wheel and um, this is chrome plated steel doesn't bend quite as easy as aluminum does but let's see how straight I can get it quick little thing I want to show you guys here I got a super tight bead on this really old 27 one and a quarter steel ram with kind of a thick rim strip on it and the, the wall of the rim is kind of hard to manipulate so I've got this thing called a tire jack 
can't remember who makes it. I think it's Cool Stop who makes it. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, I sell them here at the shop. It's called the Tire Jack. Mm. Man, this thing will save you a whole bunch because this part will grab the tire. That part grabs the rim on the other side. And so you kind of grab the tire like so, and then you go on the other side of the rim, and you kind of put it like that, and it pulls the tire up for you. So you don't have to kill your wrists. So you kind of just do it slowly and do it a little bit. I'm only going like say an inch away from my thumb to let that go up there. And this will help you get the tire on on old rims that just can't get it on. Bam, see that? Now it's on there. So I'm gonna inflate it and make sure it's not gonna slip off the rim. Um, hopefully it won't since it was that tight. I'm gonna do the other one. Um, and then I also wanna show you something with the crank arms. Another thing about old bikes, if they've been dumped over, I don't know, you guys probably can't see it from this angle, but this crank arm is actually bent inward. Actually, you can kind of see it from right there. It's actually bent this way a little bit. It, it kind of bends back instead of coming out this direction or at least straight, it's kind of going inward. I don't know, let me see if I can get this one over here. See if I line that up with the with the frame, it kind of kind of goes out a little bit. Let's do that a little bit there, so you can kind of see how it's almost perfectly straight, where the middle of this pin is about at the back of that. If we go to this side, you see the middle of that pin here is about. E Oops, sorry. The middle of the pin here is about equal with, man, about where? Right here on the on there. So it's definitely bent in. I'm going to have to straighten that out. New crank arms, you can't do that. The old, old steel ones, you can. Uh, let me show you the tool here that we use to uh, straighten those old things out. This is the tool that we use to bend the crank arms back. I don't even think they make this anymore. It's made by Park called the HCS1 so um, it says uh, something hand crank straightener so it is a crank straightener um, I'm gonna have to take off the pedal but to straighten that out but it kind of goes around like like this once I took the pedal off you kind of go around this thing this way if you can let's see if I can Get around that pedal like that, boom. And this will, that part will hit the crank arm and this part will go on the outside of the crank arm there and it'll push on it. And literally it's a big, huge leverage bar that allows you to grab this and literally bend this back into shape. Now I'm gonna make sure I take the pedal off so that the back part in here gets a really good grab on that crank arm because it's only grabbing just a little bit. So let me take off the crank arm and I'll straighten all that out. Um, I don't need to show you that to you guys because that's just kind of boring, but I just kind of want to point out, you know, this is what it takes to get that crank arm straightened. It's uh, this particular tool. And of course, ours is modified with a axle because we lost the main pin, I guess, many, many, many years ago, or when he got this. Uh, yeah, he probably didn't have it. This came from a shop that closed down many years ago, and he's probably had this thing for 22 years plus. So this tool itself has got to be probably you know, 30 plus years old. Anyways, let me continue.
course this Raleigh came in with a bent drive side crank arm. Is that yeah. I'm trying to see if I can bend it back a little bit. I don't think I can. I'm trying, but we'll see what happens. Hmm. Well, I don't think he's too worried about it. I should be able to bend this back just enough to get him going. Yeah, there we go. That will have to do him. I hope you plan on stopping slowly. <laughs>